Oh, oh. 
the Lord. Hey, let him not shut all of my heart. Yeah. Because he lives, we live. Because he lives, you live. And in him we live. We move. And we have our being. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Well, come on, let's welcome to the podium none other than our very own brother, Pastor Terrell Wheat. In the name of the Lord, receive him. Come on, clap those hands. Oh, come on, celebrate while he's on his way up. We've got much to celebrate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, happy Resurrection Sunday. Can we give Jesus a hand of praise in the building? This morning, he is amazing. He's awesome. He's great. He's mighty. I know we've already worshipped him, but one more time, can we give Jesus a hand of praise in the building? It's resurrected Sunday. Time to raise the roof. Give him glory this morning. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus, and we lift him. Come on, before you sit down, why don't you fist bump somebody? And say happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, find two or three people to fist bump and to say happy Resurrection Sunday. Come on, find somebody else. Come on. Come on, get to the other side of the room. Find somebody else. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Today is a very special day. Today is a very special day. Not only is this Resurrection Sunday, but today we celebrate our apostle. It is his birthday today. Come on, can we give God, I mean, can we just stand to our feet? I don't see him yet, but can we stand to our feet and celebrate? Our apostle on his birthday, come on. He's somewhere in the building. Let us hear him. Let him hear us. Glory. Come on, let's honor him this morning. On this red. Oh, here he come. Come on, here he come. Let's celebrate the happy birthday man of God. Come on, let's celebrate him this morning. Happy birthday. Come on, clap, come on. Let's, let's honor God for the men of God that he's given us. Come on. Let's honor God. Yeah. Come on. Everybody point your hand toward the apostle. And I need y'all to just say, got him. <laughs> all right, you all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We got him this morning. He was ready to preach, bring the word of God. But we said we're going to give the man of God a break on his birthday. We're going to let him sit and receive what the Lord would have for him and the church. And man of God, a happy birthday. We just honor you. Are you surprised? <laughs> he said he's surprised. One more time, can we give it up for Apostle? He don't know what to do with himself. He don't like this kind of stuff. He doesn't like this kind of stuff. But I believe that it is so appropriate that, that we intentionally take time to give honor where honor is due. And this is a man of God who always gives, always labors, loves on everyone. Uh, I mean, you, you know, just, I haven't met, I can probably count on two fingers, the people that I've met who have a heart like this man of God. I mean, you talk about a genuine man of God who really loves God and loves people. I mean, uh, uh, it's such a privilege and an honor to even meet someone like you, let alone um, be able to be, you know, kind of in this space and, 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 and rivers. I just want y'all to understand that God has really blessed you with this man of God and his lovely wife. Come on, let's give it up for her. She reached out to me and asked me if I would come. I said, don't get me in trouble. I ain't, 
I said, do not get me in trouble. She said, you ain't going to be in no trouble. I said, I trust you. Let's do this. So again, let's just honor God for these. All right. All right, it's Resurrection Sunday. I have about 20 minutes worth of something in me to give you, then I'm going to sit on down. Um, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 27. I'll be reading from the NIV translation, Matthew 27 and 27. It says, um, if you are looking, finding your iPads or iPhones or whatever you're using, your Bibles, if you got it, say, I got it. If you need a couple of seconds, just say, wait. All right. I'll give you a couple of more seconds to find this. Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 27, it says, then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the patrium. That's a, that's a common room. They took him into the patrium. And gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They, they stripped him and put on a scarlet robe on him. Verse 29 says, And they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his, what? His head. They put a staff in his right hand. And they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff out of his hand and they struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off his robe. They stripped him again. They took off his robe and put on his own clothes on him, and they led him away to crucify him. I want to read verse 29 again. It, said, it says, and they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. I want to use for a title on this Resurrection Sunday to dive into this text, What Broke Your Heart Will Fix Your Crown. What, what broke your heart will fix your crown. I know we got masks and we all type. Look at somebody and say, what broke your heart will fix your crown. Today is a day that churches are more filled than they will be for the rest of the year. People have got up and put on a good clothes, brushed their teeth, combed their hair. All in order to celebrate Jesus and his resurrection to celebrate the fact that he lives, that, that he reigns, that he is Lord and he is God, to celebrate this wonderful occasion that we all call Resurrection Sunday. And I think it's appropriate that we would get up at least on this Sunday, and some of us have not been at church all year and, and watched church all year, but today you decided to get up. Some of you are still in your underwear, but you are up and you are online and you said, let me at least go to virtual church so that I can hear something about Jesus. Now, it's interesting that we celebrate Sunday, this, this, this resurrection, this moment of triumph, this moment where we see Jesus in the posture and in the place that he is supposed to be. But what I want us to realize this morning, that in order for Jesus, in order for Jesus to get to this lofty position, this position of, of where he was supposed to be, this position of where he was ordained to be, he had to go through what we call a Good Friday. In order to experience a Resurrection Sunday, there has to be a Good Friday. And for years, um, I'm no Bible scholar, but for years it troubled me why they would call Good Friday good. I think it was the worst day that anyone could ever experience. In fact, I call this day Good Friday where Jesus experienced the sum of all fears. We call it good, and I guess we could celebrate it as good because of all the sacrifices he made. But I want to tell you, there's nothing good about the Good Friday that Jesus experienced. 
any fear that you have, the greatest fears that you have, the sum of all fears, no matter what you are afraid of, the sum of all fears is what Jesus experienced in one day. And one day, Jesus was separated from his circle. The people who he had walked with and trained for three and a half years in the worst time of his life, they left him. He was separated from his circle, those that he prayed for, those who he fed, those who he trained, those who he who he kept, those who he went and ministered to their families, those where he healed their loved ones, those where 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 he showed them um, sides of him and, and gave them lessons that no one had ever received before. Those who he walked with for three and a half years, those he showed miracles to in the toughest time of his life on a Friday when he was brought before the crowds and mocked, he was separated from his circle. One of the worst things that we can ever experience, some of the biggest fears that we have is to be separated, to be alone, especially when we feel like we need someone. Another thing that happened on the same day, it would be bad if it was a different day, but on the same day, I'm talking about the sum of all fears. On the exact same day that he was separated, he was also stripped. This means that he was exposed. They took his clothes off in front of a crowd. And for many of us, we're dressed um, very nicely. But, but, but how many know there's some things about us that we don't want people to see? And we pray to God that he does not expose our mess. And, and Jesus, in one day, what we call Good Friday, was exposed. How many can praise God right now that in the midst of everything that you are going through, God is still covering you? That even on Resurrection Sunday, he's not, he has not let all your mess get out. Come on, I don't know, I know, I know some of y'all ain't never did nothing. I know you came out the womb saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, uh, speaking in tongues. I'm talking about them good old tongues. Uh, I know that's you, but if there's anybody in the building on Resurrection Sunday that is thankful that God is still covering you in your process, can you just give him a... So they, so they, so they stripped Jesus. They exposed him all in one good Friday. And this is how I know Jesus was not from the West side because they, 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 they spit in his face. Oh Lord, it would have been over right there. The whole story would have shifted. It would have changed. Uh, Good Friday would have been bad Friday. Because I don't know how many spits, yeah, spits, spittles I could have (laughs) taken. You know, people can do a lot of stuff to you. People can say a lot of stuff about you, right? But you going to spit in my, I'm talking about the sum of all fears. In one day, he separated. In one day, he stripped. In one day, they spit in his face. And then, not only that, they shamed him. They made fun of him. They mocked him. They stripped his clothes off and they put put other clothes on. And they began to mock him and talk about him. And they began to say um, bad things about him. And I know, I thank God that Jesus is Jesus and I'm not Jesus. Because I don't know if I could have taken them mocking me, talking about me in front of everybody else, playing games, leaning down, acting like they 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 are worshiping me. I probably would have got up and did something that would have embarrassed me. I would have said something like, you better keep my wife's name out of, no, let me stop. I don't know if I could have took all of that. I don't know if I could have sat there and taken all of that. <laughs> Keep, oh my, okay, let's keep going. (laughs) Oh my God, and they shamed him. Not only that, they hit him on his head. You know, the Bible's funny. The Bible says that they... 
that they mocked him, that they, they hit him on his head time and time again. I mean, they, you talk about the sum of all fears. I'm talking about, you're talking about stuff that we fear. We fear being stripped. We fear being shamed. We fear being separated. We fear being struck. And not only that, he went to the cross, and this is all happening in the public eye. He suffocated in front of everyone. Not only that, I'm talking about a day, you're talking about the sum of all fears. Not only that, they actually sacrificed him, let someone who was innocent go, and kept him and crucified him while they let a guilty man go, go free. You talking about, I know y'all haven't had a bad two years. I know the pandemic has been rough. But ain't nobody had a day like this day. Ain't nobody had a day as rough as this day. Now, ironically, when you step into the ministry of Christ, when you accept the call to follow Christ, you may not have all of these things happen to you in one day, but I promise you, if you are called to pastor, I promise you, if you are called to deal with people, I promise you that if you are an apostle, I promise you that if you are a prophet, I promise you that if you are an evangelist and a teacher called to the fivefold ministry, I promise you, if you try to serve Jesus, there are people who will come into your life and they will attempt to knock your crown sideways. Oh, my God, if you have been in ministry any amount of time, and I know it's Apostle's birthday, and we're celebrating, I know it's Resurrection Sunday, and we're celebrating, and I know y'all probably already got over the fact that y'all don't get to hear y'all pastor on Resurrection Sunday, but it's okay, all right? All right, we, we okay with that? I, when, 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 you, when you are in church, when you try to lead God's people, when you try to be saved, you go through some things that are hard. That will make you cry. But I came to tell you on this Resurrection Sunday, what broke your heart is getting ready to fix your crown. Oh, my God. The thing that you cry for on Friday, ah, it is Resurrection Sunday. And the people... That broke your heart. See, nah, 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 nah. There's some people in here that you look too good to, you wrote the wrong clothes today. Uh, I wrote the wrong clothes today. Uh, because, because if we think about how good God has been, when we think about what the outcome should have been, what we if we think about everything that we've been through, we would know that it was only the goodness, the mercy, the love, the kindness, the grace of God that has us here in our right mind because people try to break us. There are some people in the building that you've experienced, especially in ministry. I'm talking to you. That if you've been in ministry for a while, you have experienced some heartbreak. The very people that you tried to help. The very people that you prayed for. The very people that you gave your last for. The very people that you gave a ride to. The very people that you spoke well of. When you needed help, when you were in your darkest day, they were nowhere to be found. And we can try to act saved and we can try to act spiritual, but it's heartbreaking when we pour everything out into a person, when we, when we pour into a ministry gift, when we, when we sacrifice, when we lay hands, and when we pray, and when we prophesy, and when we make an investment only to not see a return on that investment, sometimes that hurts. When we cover people, oh, y'all don't want to hear me. When we know we can destroy someone's life with the information that we know, but we cover people. And the same people that we've covered are out there trying to expose us. The devil is a liar. There's no way after, after being on earth 50 plus years and after, after, after being in ministry this long that, that you haven't felt what it feels like to try to cover some people only to see those same people that you tried to cover try to expose you. 
Expose your weaknesses. Try to expose as if they can do your job, the way that you do things. Or try to expose the way that you think. The devil is a liar. And I came to tell you, Apostle, and I came to tell Rivers this morning, and came to tell those who are watching online, what broke your heart is getting ready to fix your crown. Oh, my God. They tried to shame you. Uh, they, 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 they even sacrificed you. They even done things to you that tried to put hits on your ministry, hits on your name. And there are some people today that you don't realize it, but one of the things that the enemy tries to do when you are in ministry is he tries to attach mess to your name. And there are people out here that are speaking evil against you that want to attach mess to your name, but the devil is a liar. We have a man of God an apostle of God that even wrote a book about it, disengaging evil assignments. Why? Because he knows that enemy will try to put something on your name, have people speaking bad about you, doing bad to you, and knowing that God has greater to you, greater for you. How many in the building this morning, how many online this morning know that no matter what they said to try to take you down, no matter what they said, even if it hurts, it's not going to stop you from getting to the place that God has for you. Uh, it only hurts when people say things about us. That, 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 that It only hurts when people say things about us if we love them. It only hurts because we care so much about them. It only hurts because of the sacrifices that we've made for them. And some of you all got little bugaboos at home even right now or running the streets or you don't know where they are even on Resurrection Sunday. And it hurts because you've sacrificed so much for them. You prayed so much for them. You work your fingers to the bone, and they're nowhere to be found. And they try to shame you and talking bad about you when you work one shift and two shifts, when you work hours, falling asleep on the way home. Also, they can eat some Captain Crunch in the morning and drink your milk and drink the juice down to a little bit and don't even finish the bottle. They're ungrateful stuff sleeping in the bed that you paid for, working on an iPhone that you paid for, got the nerve in the winter instead of going to get a blanket. They're going to turn up the heat uh, on bills that they don't pay. Oh, they just run. They, I, I told my boys, you have a limit on the shower. You take 10-minute showers. You uh, got these kids who are ungrateful taking an hour hot shower. I dare you. You better go to the health club and take a shower and run the water as long as you want. After 10 minutes, I go down in the basement and turn all the water off. Because you got people that you've done, I turn the whole one, I turn the whole thing off. They be singing in the shower, la, 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 let the whole thing go off. I don't care how you're going to get that soap off you. But you are not running no more water in the name of you. But the point is, we all have been hurt by people that we love so much. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to be in ministry, if you're going to serve God, if you're going to do things the way that Jesus desires, you have to be able to take it. Mm. You know, I honor you, Apostle. I don't, I, I, I'm not claiming that I've been around the whole time you've been in ministry. I'm not claiming that I've been close to you like we are now. But I know by the spirit of God that you've taken some things. <laughs> some of y'all did it to our arm. <laughs> We're still here. And that's funny, too, that the people who be harassing you the most still be staying. I'm not going to mess with y'all on Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> You'd be like, man, I wish they would leave. All right, let's keep going. All right, but, 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 but I know that there are people in ministry who you have sacrificed for, who you have, who you have helped. I mean, you got this remnant of those that's always going to rock and always try to do the right thing. Those who always try to whatever, let's make it work. But you have those who you know good and well that you've given your all to. And for some reason, they choose to dishonor. Here's the message, and I need to take my seat. The seasons and years 
up this honor. The thing that broke your heart is getting ready <laughs> to fix your crown. Oh, because you did not give up. Oh, my God, because you did not throw in the towel. Rivers, because you did not give up on Jesus. Because you did not give up on God. Because you did not throw in the towel. Because you worship through your tears. And I'm telling you that if you're in ministry, you, you are going to experience some days of tears. Because you're still here on Resurrection Sunday. Because you still got a hallelujah. Because you still got a thank you, Jesus. Because you still, maybe you can't lift both hands, but you can lift one hand. Uh, maybe you can't get that full hallelujah out like you want to, but you're still able to say thank you, Jesus. Uh, because you still got a praise left, because you still got worship left, because you have not given up, although you went through some of the worst days that anyone has ever been through, because you endured it all, I want to tell you that your crown is getting ready to be fixed. At the end of the story, the reason we celebrate today is because Jesus was given a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and tongue must confess that he is Lord. At the end of the day, he is Lord and he is God. He's ever living to make intercession for the saints. At the end of the day, he's in his seat. At the end of the day, he's giving his rightful praise. At the end of the day, churches are filled all over the world to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, he's getting the praise that he deserves. But I'm going to tell you all this. Um, the people, as Jesus was at the end of his ministry, the Bible says he looked at the city and he weeped because he was getting ready to leave. He weeped because he was getting ready to leave. He, he weeped. He wept because he was getting ready to leave. He wept because he was getting ready to leave. He wept because he was getting ready to leave because you know what? There was coming a time where the people who he was touching, they were never going to be able to touch him, touch him like that again. And here's the point. Here's the implication. I think we should honor people while they're here. That's the message. I think we should be the ones that help fix the crown. I think that we should be the ones that help, even with God, honor the people once we know that honor is due. I have two minutes. God is getting ready to send people in your life like never before who are going to honor the God in you. There's a people and a place prepared for you. Your people are coming together and your place is coming together. You're about to receive blessings like you've never seen before because God is getting ready to send people in your life that got it. Ah. Somebody say, put your card up. You're about to get ready to go places, vacation, dinners, luxury trips, and they're going to say, put your card up. I got this. Somebody say it again. Put your card up. Oh, you about to hear that. Come on. You about to hear that. I loose that in this house. Uh, you about to hear that for vacations. You about to hear that for cars. Uh, you about to hear that for houses. Uh, you about to hear that for dinner. Put your card up. Because God is sending people in your life that got it. I came here on this day to, on resurrection to let you know that it is getting better for you. But then I have one other assignment that I have to complete. It is Apostle's birthday. Let's clap for that. Now, his wife has nothing to do with this, so if I get in trouble, I got myself in trouble. She only invited me. And now, if I get in trouble, I got myself in trouble. Men of God like this men of God don't like what I'm about to do. But I believe that we should give people flowers while they are alive. Amen? While it's their time, while they're here, while, while we can touch them. I want us to sow into this man of God on his birthday. Some of y'all had already planned that. Can we, can we clap for Jesus? I want us to sow into this man of God on his birthday. Those that are online, I want us to sow into this man of God on his birthday. And I heard two seeds. If this ain't your seed, this ain't your seed. It's okay. It's not your seed, not your season, whatever. But I heard two seeds, and I never will tell anybody to do anything that I'm not going to do. I heard two seeds. It's his birthday. 
two seeds. The first seed that, and I'm going to be the first one to sow it into this man of God today, is $500. Those that are online, listen to me. $500. Those that can right now, I need you to get your checkbook ready, make a check, get your card ready. They're going to be able, Pastor Anderson, someone will be able to tell me ways to, ways to give, but I want I want anyone who says that they're in a position this morning, even online, you can put it in the chat to say, somebody help me out with this virtual giving. Um, but anybody who's here this morning, even online, who can stand with me and say, I can sow $500 into this man of God on his birthday. Can y'all just stand to your feet with me? Come on. Anybody who's, who's able to say that, anybody who's able to do that, even online. I got two C's. I see, yeah, people are standing. Come on, give God a hand to pray for that. Your C coming. Thank you. Thank you. So two C's. First one is 500. I'm, I'm going to sow that. The, the next seed that I heard this morning is $200. That 500 missed some of y'all. Y'all like y'all missed me with that one. It's not my seed. I see the $500 ones. But if you're here today and say, I'm going to sacrifice and sow $200 into this man of God, just keep standing. I want you to stand up. If you say, I can sow 200 to this man of God, it's his birthday. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see all those popping up all over the building, online. The information is online. It's on the screen. They said, turn around, man of God. And I'm not sowing this. I'm not talking about it to the ministry. I'm talking about directly to this man of God. So the information is on the screen. This is um, dollar sign Stephen A. Gardner for the cash app, for the Zelle, Stephen A. Gardner, 70 at yahoo.com. And then PayPal is um, sagardnerministries at gmail.com. If you're sowing it to the ministry, but if you're sowing it for apostle, just put S-A-G so they can know it goes directly to him. This is my assignment today, and I'm going to sit down after this. Some of you all may say, you know what? I couldn't do 500 to real. I could not do 200. But man of God, I got 100. I'm going to sow 100. I just need you to stand up. Come on. Come on, you say thank you, thank you. I see y'all popping up over the building. All right? I'm going down just to stand up. If you say I can sow 100, stand up for me. It's a good question. I'll, I... All right, so I'm going to move and get out their way. Here's the last thing. Some of y'all say I didn't have that, but I'm going to sow 50. I'm going to sow 20. That's the other five and a two I heard. If you say I'm going to sow 50 or 20 into this man of God, I need you to stand up. And I'm about to take my seat and sit down. 50 and 20. All right? That's everybody. Now, if you are sowing that this morning and I, I, I didn't ask to do any of this, I just want somehow for each of you that are sowing, if you got like cash or check, I just need y'all to come this way, walk right around this way, and just bless the man of God and the woman of God. And just, actually, man of God right here, do me a favor. Give Apostle this bucket. We can, we can switch it up later. He doesn't like this. He might get me later. But I just need y'all to come from wherever you're coming from. If you're sewing and you are, even if you're sewing electronically, I just need y'all to come around and just sew in the basket. Just say happy birthday, even if you're sewing digital. Say happy birthday, those that are online. Say happy birthday real quick. Still remember we're social distancing a little bit. But if you have any of those seats, come on, I got I to gotta sit down, even online. Let's say happy birthday. I need everybody else, no matter what you're sowing, no one knows what you're sowing, no matter what you're sowing, everybody else, if you're sowing anything, just go ahead and stand up and get in the line just to real quick and move quickly just to say happy birthday. Even online. I need you to move quickly, move quickly. Come on, I need y'all to move quickly. Come on, if you're sewing anything, just come on, say happy birthday.
Come on. Keep it moving. Come on. Keep it moving. Come on, real quick. Come on, real quick. Listen, real quick. This is what I'm going to do real quick. It's your birthday, Apostle. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, I said I'm going to sow the 500. I'm going to throw a little double honor on you. I'm going to sow 1,000. 500 for me, 500 for my business. Can we give God a hand of praise for this man of God this morning? Can we stand to our feet and honor the man of God on Resurrection Sunday? We just want to sing this song to him. I tell you what, we'll just do drums. How about that? One, two, one, two, three, and faithful servant, joy and gladness fills you. Oh, 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 faithful servant, joy and gladness fills you. Oh, oh, if we declare faithful servant, joy and gladness fills you. You can join us when you get a chance, yo. Joyful servant, joy and gladness fills you. Blessing, blessings overtake you. Goodness surrounds you. Blessings overtake you. Goodness surrounds you. Faithful servant, faithful servant, joy and gladness fills you. Joy. 
It's important that we honor, we honor those that purpose to live their lives as righteous representatives on the earth. And on this national holiday, Sunday, April 17, 20 and 2, it is with great pleasure to honor our senior leader and amazing gift to the body of Christ, the one and only Apostle Stephen A. Garner. Come on, let's give it up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Amen. All right, all right. The Children's and Youth Ministry wants to encourage you by highlighting a few of your many virtuous and impeccable qualities. It was very difficult, but we succeeded in narrowing them down to five for the sake of time and five being the number of grace. Apostle Stephen A. Garner is a man of great wisdom, a man of integrity, a man of inspired prayer, a man of sound doctrine, a man of remarkable discipline. Awesome. Apostle, we thank you for your sacrifice and commitment to living a poured out life before us here at Rivers. You inspire our local assembly and beyond by living an example of what it looks like to be an exceptional person that's doing extraordinary things. Happy birthday, Apostle. We love you. Happy birthday, Apostle. Help yourself to a box of dough. That came from me, by the way. Child to Bishop Anderson because he said we had Jack in this church. Anyway, from one OG to another Apostle. <laughs> Apostle Ghana, this journey you on is dope. And I say that because I've seen you take us high, take us low, make us cry, make us laugh, knock us down, pick us up. But most of all, release love into us, Pastor God. I've seen you assimilate. I've seen you release positivity, wisdom, and knowledge. Become a multiplier and an influencer. And with that, Pastor, I, I believe when God saved you, and I say it for all of us, when God saved you, he didn't make no mistake. Good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to honor and show my gratitude to our leader, Apostle Stephen Garner. I am even honored for just standing here presenting this to you. All I can do is reflect on that moment when I first started attending Rivers service in November of 2018. I was impacted with such great um, doctrine, wisdom, knowledge, and insight as the word was brought forth when you spoke on burial breakers in the month of December of 2018. You broke down how barrier breakers purpose is to mature us emotionally and get and grow with our leader and by committing to go a distance with them and is willing to press beyond any and all barriers that may prohibit us. 
I am grateful to be a part of God's anointing that's upon rivers, ordaining us to help fulfill the church. You have challenged me in my faith to be more like Christ throughout the years because of your teachings and leadership. I thank you for your sacrifice for the kingdom. I thank you for your continuous yes to God. I thank you for going above and beyond to fulfill your purpose as our leader. I thank you for your honesty. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for being a man of honor. I thank you for being a man of integrity. I thank you for sharing your family with us. And I just thank you for everything. And happy birthday, Apostle. Your life is destined for greatness. And your faithfulness is being multiplied for an outpouring of blessings. I love you, Apostle. So happy birthday, Apostle. I really appreciate you and everything that you do for all of the members of this church. You really go above and beyond to make sure each of us feel valued in our own individual ways. And you go out of your way to show your support and encourage each of us. And I want to let you know that the effort that you put in to engage the young adults doesn't go unnoticed. From small youth gatherings to Zoom meetings to talking to us one-on-one -on -one, to sending us direct messages on Facebook. Your words of encouragement are impactful and they mean a lot to me as well as other people in my generation. And... My family, we joined this church when I was in the seventh or eighth grade, <laughs> and I've admired you as a leader then, and I still admire you today, so happy birthday. I hope this year brings you so much joy and laughter. to your lovely wife <laughs> and to the family and our newest little one all right <laughs> to god be the glory thank you so much apostles for your consecration dedication everything you do to carry us to this place where god would have you carry us i thank you for the river and everyone that's a part if you're not a part of the river come on jump in we swimming amen we love your pops to god be the glory <laughs> Uh, so first, I want to say happy birthday. So I have three top points that I feel like describe Apostle and his ministry. So uh, first, I want to talk about how when I first came to Rivers, I saw that Apostle ran like a top tier ministry. And I would personally describe Rivers as a Chick-fil-A ministry because when I walk in there, I feel God's glory just like when I come to Rivers and everything was in order. And you wouldn't even know if anything was going wrong behind the scenes. I used to tell my parents I knew Apostle ran a great ministry when he would call up all, like, the five prophets, and they would just prophesy on demand back to back, like, no stopping. I was like, Rivers is off the chain. This is some good apostolic training. Um, I also want to talk about um, this deep doctrine that Apostle receives from the eighth and ninth heavens every Sunday. Now, as you all know, I'm in college, and I study neuroscience, and that's like a hard major. But this word that Apostle preaches, this is no shade to those that aren't super high in Christianity, but this is some master degree level doctrine that... That if, if Apostle was a professor, I would have my MacBook, my iPad, and my big notebook to take notes. I just know Apostle stays in the face of God. I know him and God laugh together. They make jokes, and that's a great thing because it's some pastors I've heard preach, and I really sat there like, what are you talking about? And I just wonder, like, did they fast? Were they in the wilderness before they preached and said this? But I know Apostle, he's fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he's just, he's just been deep in his word. Um, I also want to say how Apostle is like a second father to me. It's like he's a second father and an uncle at the same time. So I have this funny story to go with this one. 
So you all know those services that go from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. where we don't really, we get like one lunch break and the apostle says the word is going to feed us. So at the beginning of this service, the apostle came up to me because he was making one of his famous Starbucks runs before a service. So being a nice apostle that he is, he came and asked me what I wanted from Starbucks. So me being someone that believes in the blessings of the Lord, I said, I wanted a large cotton candy frappuccino and two cake pops. And I've never seen someone's face just change so quick. And Apostle looked at me and said, that's something my wife will order. You not my wife. <laughs> and he said it with the most straight face. And all I could think of was, you know what, Apostle, you're absolutely right. I'm not your wife. So, so um, I really felt like he came back and he brought me my large frappuccino. He brought me one cake pop instead of two, but I really felt like honored and high up in the kingdom yet and still. So Apostle had came back and I realized he had a lot of love for me because I don't order off the dollar menu. So I felt like Apostle really loved me for that. So I just want to end with happy birthday. I hope you receive a lot of blessings and I love you a lot. Good morning, saints. Can I ask the elders to please join me on the stage, please? Amen, amen. Give it up for our leadership team. So I, we want to say happy birthday. We want to thank you for your tremendous leadership. You are part excellence, and you strive for us. You, it is your desire for us to get there and be there. Um, the team that's here and the team that's coming know that you do a tremendous job. We don't know if we can ever get to the standards that you set for us as a house. But as a wife, as a daughter, as a mom, as a grandma, all the roles that we all play and spouses and all those things. We are who we are because you are who you are. You set the standard above everything regardless of how I might feel about my spouse today. Your, um, your stance for covenant outweighs any other situation that I can ever stand for. Um, I, you've given us the position concerning prayer to, that makes us who we are. We pray about everything, even the people that are coming, the people that are here. So when you feel like you can't go through anything, know that Apostle is praying for us as a family. When you feel like you're, you, you won't ever get to the place that God called you to be, know that Apostle is praying for you as a ministry gift or a daughter or a wife or whatever position you play in this church or in the kingdom at large. I've seen you go to places that people don't even know who you are, but you go with such love and compassion and it's nonstop results to say, man, what a blessing he is. You've been a blessing to the entire body of Christ. You've been a blessing to the nations. You've been a blessing to the poor. You've been a blessing to the youth. You've been a blessing to those that are yet to be born. You've been a blessing to your wife. You've been a blessing to your family. You, sir, have been a blessing, a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. Regardless of what you go through, you never stop leading. You never stop taking the charge. You never stop believing. And you never stop or lay down your stance for God and all the things he calls you to. We are who we are, sir, because you are who you are. Thank you for your yes to your wife, your family, your children, the body of Christ, the kingdom at large. Yes to the nations. Yes to the people. Yes to those who felt like they betrayed you and they thought they were going to stop you. Yes, you do it all because you love God, you love his people, and you call to advance the kingdom, and only you can. Thank you for your continuous prayers and support of not only me and my family, but I can say this on behalf of the leadership, the eldership, and the entire body called Rivers of Living Waters Ministry Chicago, international, global, wherever. All the rivers that are yet to be in, yet to be birthed, planted, yet to be established. We are who we are, sir, because you are who you are. An extraordinary vessel called by God, anointed and appointed to pray down the heavens and to raise up the dead. This time and this time yet to be born, we honor you for your yes. Thank you, Apostle Stephen A. Garner. We absolutely love you and your entire family. Give it up, Rivers! There's no apostle like our apostle. There's absolutely no apostle like our 
Girl Five. So we love you, sir. We are who we are because you are who you are. Happy 57th, 52nd birthday, Apostle Stephen A. Garner Extraordinaire. The team, this is the team, the awesome yes, team. Yes, yes. The awesome team. Holy, wait. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh. Breaking news. Breaking news. We got breaking news. Yes. We have breaking news. Yes. Uh, What's Pastor the Leonard. News? Would you like to start off? Can I interview you about this mighty man of God? Yes. And, 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 and you go ahead on and start this thing off. Amen. Breaking news. He was 27 years old, and he was my teacher. And the subject he was teaching was the making of, of the leader. leader. And I yes. mean, he was stern. He was to the point, and he had it on point. And then take no mess. At and I'm 20 years older, and he was my teacher. Yes. The making of a leader. That's history. And I loved him then, and I love him now. Amen. And then Pastor Tweet come in here and talk about the crown. The yeah. And I said, mm. Pastor went through all that, and Pastor Tweet saying they were doing his Weeks. crown. So I took a study pit and looked up his name. And Stephen, the origin is Greek. The inherited meaning is crown. The spirit connotation is bless. And then there was a scripture, 2 Timothy 2 5 in the NASB. Also, if anyone completes, competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize. Unless he completes according to the rules, he follow the rules. Yes, he do. He follow the rules. It's an honor to serve you, my apostle, my friend, and you straight to the point. News. News break. News break. <laughs> okay. Okay. Apostle, this is an international holiday. This is now April the 17th, 2022, which is a national holiday on behalf of Apostle Stephen A. Gardner. And every year hereafter, we will celebrate April 17th, 2022, 20, 23, 24, 25, and so on. Ditto. And so he looked up your name, and so I just want to thank God for all the pastors and everyone who had a role in what we're doing for you today, because there is tremendous things, because we got to present you with this present. I have something I want to say. I took the initials of your name and decided to take each letter and describe you. The S is spirit-filled leader. You are definitely spirit-filled. Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and those tongues, everybody know. It's like a machine gun. That's how we describe you. So we also, the T is for transparent leader. You have no problem saying where you came from, and, and giving God credit for what he's done for you in your life, then and now. 
You are an exemplary leader. Exemplary people excel at what they do and are excellent examples to others. Sometimes something exemplary is so good. And apostle, you are so good. You are a passionate leader. That's what the P represent. About the thing, the word of God. Strong, the, passionate means strong feelings, intense, and emotions. When it comes to the word, that's you. <laughs> that's who you are. You're Holy Spirit led. That's what the H represents. And what you do, you're led by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he may be a little hard and step on your toe, but it's all right because he's being led by the Holy Spirit. Extraordinary leader. Amazing, exceptional, and remarkable. So we, I saved the last one, which is the N, national teacher. Because I was also in that class when he was 27. But what I forgot to tell you was, you broke something off of me that was generational because I wasn't able to complete things until that incident in that class. Let's give it up for him. Let me tell you, way back then when he was only 27, I ain't gonna tell my age back then, but hey, <laughs> he was doing it. And I tell you, you have always pride yourself in doing, studying, going beyond. And you've passing that on to this, this uh, congregation and all the leaders here. We strive to do better because of who you are. And so we thank you. And I'm not going to take up any more time. I want to tell you this. We, this body of pastors and the small groups, we decided to present you with a birthday card. But you know a card without no money ain't nothing. We have a check for you. You got some cash. You got some cash. Yes. Cash. Money talk. $4,500. Hey, give it up. Give it up. You deserve this. And, you know, we tried to send him on a little trip, but, he, you know, he don't like people do nothing for him, so you got to not let him you know. Got you got to not let him know when, you, when you're trying to do something from him. But I learned that during this time. <laughs> so next time, get ready. All right. Get ready. We got you, Pastor. We, okay. we, we heard you. Hold on. We're going to have Pastor Janice say a few words. So, Apostle, happy birthday. Um, I've known a, the Garner family for a long time. Uh, the children were younger. They were, some of them weren't born. Um, but I can tell you guys something about Apostle, and he has been persistent, but he is consistent. Consistent, yes. Yes. I tell you, and a passionate husband, father, preacher, and teacher, yeah. all of the above. But one of the things that has always stuck out with you to me when we were on Madison, one Sunday, you had ministered to Prophetess Kailanda. And after you went back into the office, I came into the office, and you were so concerned with what the overall body thought about how you had ministered to your daughter. And um, others could possibly feel left out. And I had a conversation with you and let you know that what you bestowed on your children, you bestowed on other children as well. Yeah. My children, personally, personally, Apostle has done some things that people would never know about because he's not the one that's going to share it. He's not going to boast about it. But I tell you, he has been a blessing. You have been a blessing to my family to me, I have called you and had conversations with you, and you have corrected me, man up, the whole nine yards, the whole nine yards, but you have been a blessing. Yes. And so I honor you. I have seen you. I watched some of the pictures that Providence Yolanda has been posting, uh, your birthday pictures. And, and you say what? 
Okay, almost got time. I got to go. But I have watched you from the beginning, and when you ministered, and I would be like, Lord, help him. Because the apostle would say some things, and I would like, make me cringe. But I tell you, I have seen you grow leaps and bounds. Not only have you grown in ministry, you have grown in your lifestyle, with your family, with your children, as a husband. I tell you, apostle, I have watched you. And if you don't speak for you, I can speak for him. I can Amen. vouch for him. Amen. I can vouch for him. Amen. So, Father, I mean, Apostle, I'm about to pray for you now. But no, I'm not going to pray for you. <laughs> but I bless you, Apostle. Yeah. And I thank you, Lord, that you would satisfy him with long life. Yeah. And the returns, a hundredfold return will come to you. I have seen you give money. You have given cars. You have given of yourself. You have denied your family to give to others. Amen. That to make sure that others had what they needed. You have blessed me. I tell you, when I was ready to throw in the towel, I tell you, Apostle. So we bless you. So I don't just speak for myself, but I speak for the entire Rivers congregation, those near and far, those who came and went. Yeah, them too. Yes. So we just bless you. We honor you. Amen. 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 Well, we thank and we honor the Lord. Thank God for the pastors. Thank you yes. all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to get your giving together for your tithes and offering. We have to take care of the maintenance of our house at this time. We know that we had an offering earlier that was specifically for Apostle. But we want you to get your tithes and your offerings together. If you would bring the buckets to the front, please. and offering. At this time, we want to thank our online audience. We want to thank you for being a part of this broadcast as we honor the man of God, Apostle Stephen Gardner. We'll see you again next week at our 8.30 a.m. service. Our giving information is coming up on the screen just in case you're out in the audience and you're a member of Rivers. You can give with the five ways to give on the screen. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Those of you that are in-house, if you have envelopes, if you're tithing, if you're giving, you can rise at this time and you can begin to come from all over the building. You can rise at this time and begin to come from all over the building. This is your regular tithes and offerings, regular tithes and offerings. If the Lord puts something on your heart, Apostle's still sitting on the edge here. Regular ties and offers are here.